Hello, Dr. Mike Matthews, physical therapist here with the PT411. Thanks so much for joining me. If you already haven't done so, make sure you follow, like, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram so you can be notified when I come out with new content. Now today, we're gonna be talking about cubital tunnel syndrome, also known as ulnar nerve entrapment, and also known more recently as cell phone elbow. We're gonna be talking about this specific issue, how we can test for it to see if it's what we actually have, how to treat it, and things that we can do throughout the day if we have it to decrease the symptoms or if we don't have it to try to prevent it from happening in the first place and to keep that elbow nice and healthy. So first off, symptoms. What kind of things do we feel whenever we're having this problem? Usually it's numbness, tingling, pain, difficulty with gripping things, or difficulty with fine motor manipulation using those fingers that are not quite working the way we, that we want them to. Now, as far as the numbness and the tingling and even the pain goes, it's gonna follow a specific area. It can be over here in any of these areas that I have colored in here on my hand. It'll affect these last two fingers here, your pinky and your ring finger. It'll come down that side of the hand, that side of the wrist, and it can be anywhere on that side of the forearm on the front or the back on that side coming down to a specific spot on the elbow between the bottom point or olecranon on here and that medial epicondyle right here so there's a little groove right there that little groove right there is actually that cubital tunnel where that nerve is getting entrapped at right there so if you have any of these symptoms there's a chance you might have this but there's a chance that it might be coming from somewhere else it is the nerve anywhere these nerves are getting irritated can refer pain going down to that area or just only in that area as well so we need to differentiate where this is coming from it can also be coming from multiple spots being entrapped in multiple places so before we even look at the elbow there we're going to take a look at our neck actually and see if there's anything happening up there now this ulnar nerve starts off at the lower segments of the neck and the upper segment of your thoracic spine there so that very very upper back and the very very lower neck area if we're having any symptoms up there any stiffness at the neck or stiffness at the very upper back there's a good chance that this is actually being caused way up here versus down here so we got to check that out if we're having symptoms up there at all um, numbness tingling pain other issues going on up there that's localized in the neck coming to that shoulder blade or even coming down to the arm and into this area we've got to treat the neck first but if we're not having symptoms at the neck or that upper back area we still need to roll it out because that doesn't just exclude it there it could be, be getting trapped more up here but only causing symptoms down here so we'll look at the range of motion in our neck here we're going to start off by twisting to each side we're going to work on side bending towards each side and every time we're looking at every single direction we're taking our neck as far as we can seeing if it's reproducing any problems or if we have stiffness other directions we need to look at we need to look at looking down all the way here we need to protrude our head forward up here we need to retract our head straight back here and we need to extend our head but we're not just extending our head from our own neutral position right here we have to retract that head back first and then we're extending there and we're seeing if any of these movements produce any of the pain down there we also have to take a look at that upper back as well so we're going to support our head right here elbows have to be forward if our elbows are out our shoulder blades get in the way of our movement of our rib cage and our thoracic spine so elbows forward here we're trying to arch that upper back here as much as we can and then we're slouching down as much as we can here we're also going to take a look at rotation between the neck and the upper back so we're going to have our hands kind of up here if you can see so if my hands are on my chest right here you're going to turn your head and your upper body as far as you can to one side and we're going to do the same thing to the other side neck and our upper body there seeing if any of that reproduces our symptoms 
So if we're reproducing our symptoms with that, we definitely need to treat the neck. I have an entire video on the main exercise we need to work on with that. So make sure you check out that video there. You can take a look at YouTube or Facebook. It's posted on both of those right there. So even if the neck is involved here, it's reproducing the pain, we cannot roll this out as well. The thing with nerves are, and it turns into a which came first, the chicken or the egg type of question, is we can have the nerves getting entrapped more up here. And over time, that decreased mobility of that nerve, it can start getting entrapped in other places, especially that cubital tunnel there, or it can get entrapped at that cubital tunnel, decrease the mobility of the nerve, and eventually start getting entrapped up higher, up at the neck and that upper back. So we can't rule it out if we're having symptoms or we're having issues up here with our neck movement, we cannot roll this out. So we've got to take a look at this as well. So we're going to work our way down to that area there. So we got to take a look at the ulnar nerve itself. So we're going to take our hands right here to the OK sign right here. We're going to actually going to make goggles right here. If we can't make goggles, we got to get as close to making those goggles right there as well. So we're going to hold this up here for a minute or so and see if it reproduces any of our symptoms here. If it's not reproducing symptoms, we're just going to take that affected side here. We're going to bring this other hand down on our elbow, depress that side, keep this over here. But now we're tilting our head towards that opposite side there. We're going to see if this reproduces those symptoms as well. So now we're going to take a look at the elbow here. So we're going to find that cubital tunnel again. So if we have that electron on the point of our elbow right here, and we come in slightly here, getting between that olecranon and that other point on the medial side here, that epicondyle. If we fall in, but not all the way to that point, we're gonna fall within a groove right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just put some sustained pressure there, about a minute. We're gonna see if that starts to reproduce our pain. The next one we're gonna do is a tap test, where you're just gonna repeatedly Give it a decent tap there. You're not banging the crap out of it, but you are putting, giving it a decent tap. Do that several times over the course of about a minute. See if that starts to reproduce our symptoms as well. If those are positive, there's a good chance it's getting entrapped there. Let's say we have this. What is the first thing that we have to do? We have to withdraw the problem. We have to withdraw what is causing the issue. It all comes down to posture and positioning for these nerves. We have to take away the issue that's causing it so that it doesn't keep happening because there's no amount of treatment that we can do. If we don't withdraw that, that will help. That will get rid of this if we keep doing the thing that's causing the problem in the first place. On the other side of things, if we don't have this problem and we want to avoid it, same thing. Let's take away these problems, these common issues that end up causing this in the first place so that we can prevent this from happening. We'll start off up here at the neck. We need a nice neutral position here. Neutral is not forward right here with our head protruded forward. Neutral is more upright here. We have to keep our chin back some nice and upright and our ears need to be over our shoulders right here. We also need to watch the posture and the positioning while sitting at our desk, whether we're writing or typing, we need to make sure that the elbow is in an optimal position. So again, nice and upright here. We gotta make sure that our elbows stay relatively at our side. We don't want our elbows coming forward here because that's gonna throw everything off here and it's gonna put our elbows in a less than optimal 90 degree position here. So keep them close to you. You wanna be close to your desk, whether you're writing or you're working on your keyboard there. So make sure that everything is nice and close here. Other thing, a lot of people tend to wanna to start to lean on their elbows, whether it's on our armrests, on our chairs, or on our desk here. Put that sustained pressure on that elbow there. Over time, we can develop this issue by having that pressure there all the time. One more thing that we need to really work on avoiding is putting a lot of tension on that nerve for a prolonged period of time. The most common time that that will happen is when we're laying down, when we're sleeping. You have people that will put their hand up above their head right here and sleep like this. Now that's gonna put you in pretty much that same position here, that testing of that ulnar nerve, putting tension on it there. So having that hand up there for long periods of time, for hours and hours, is definitely a no-go here. So now we need to take a look at treating this issue. So the first thing we're gonna do is stretch out that nerve. We're gonna floss it, try to move it around those tissues. We're gonna put tension on, 
take tension off. So we're stretching the nerve out and it's also moving it around all the tissue in there, break up any adhesions. Now the nerve can be very sensitive. So we're gonna start off more with our hand a little bit away from us. Our palm is facing away here. Elbows starting off at a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna work on extending our wrist here. We're making that okay sign again. So these two fingers are up this way, they're extended. We're gonna work on extending there. See if that reproduces our symptoms. If it does, we're backing off on that elbow a little bit until we don't feel those symptoms. And we're working into pumping that hand right there. You wanna do this for 20 repetitions at a time. We're gonna do two sets each time we do it. We're gonna do this three times a day. If we're not feeling those symptoms there, we're gonna slowly, slowly wind up that nerve until we start to feel those symptoms. So those symptoms aren't there. We're gonna come back a little bit more closer to our head here. We're flexing that wrist back every once in a while. See where we're having those symptoms. And then once we find those symptoms, you're backing off just enough to where those symptoms go away. And we're working into that motion there. Now the next thing here is if we're getting all the way here and it's not necessarily reproducing those symptoms, we're gonna bring this shoulder down here. So we're depressing that and then we're doing the same thing there. Working our way back there to see when we can reproduce those. If we're still not getting it there, we need to start tilting our head to the other side until we find that. And again, at once we find it, we back off just enough that we don't have it anymore and we're working into that zone there. So let's say at any point in time, we start feeling those symptoms and we're backing off. The next day, we're trying to see if we can take it that little bit further within that pain-free area. We're slowly winding it up this way, adding that depression at the shoulder there, working it the same way there, and then working it towards being here, working through that pain-free zone. Not every day will we be able to progress it and take it further, but at least every few days, we should be able to take it a little further and further, stretching that out. We also need to mobilize all the joints that it crosses and stretch out the other tissues that surround this nerve all the way from the neck down to our fingers. So let's start off here at the neck. We're working on those famous retractions here, retracting back into this direction here over time, trying to take it further and further. If you have pretty good movement there, we're retracting back here and then working on extending as far as we can. We're doing that as a repeated movement. This one we gotta do several times a day, five, six times a day, 10 repetitions. Working on this, it'll take you less than 30 seconds to finish it. So don't think that it's gonna take up all your time doing it six times a day. So take out that 30 seconds to do 10 repetitions of those retractions and see if we can work our way into retracting and extending there. So we've gotta also work the upper, upper back here arms here supporting that head elbows forward and we're working on keeping that neck back and retracted a little bit and now we're extending our upper back here just working into that we also need to stretch out our tricep our three-headed muscle on the back of the arm here it crosses over the shoulder and the elbow so we have to mind both joints as we're stretching it out so we're going to flex our shoulder up we're going to bring it way up here elbow is bent and we can add a little pressure coming up here. And usually what I'll do is I'll use the back of the, my head, the base of my skull here, to block my wrist and my forearm here so I don't have any movement here as I raise up here. Stretches with the muscles, 30 second holds, three times. Let's just visit this one or two times a day. The next thing is keeping our elbow, the joints nice and mobile. We have three joints we need to work. So a few movements we gotta work on there. We need to make sure we have full mobility with straightening the elbow, full mobility with bending the elbow. So starting off with the bending, very simple. You're just working on pressing this way. It's a joint. We're doing a repeated movement here, 10 times three times a day. We need to work on straightening. We're gonna work on trying to extend out here. This one's a little bit more difficult to do because you have to control that upper arm there. A lot of people will end up pushing everything down and not getting that full extension there. So what you might have to do is prop up that upper arm on a ball or something else on top of a desk and work on straightening that out right there. So the last thing we need to stretch out are our wrist flexor muscles right here. So all we're gonna do is pull our hand back, elbows straight here, grabbing onto our fingers, 
pulling back this way. If this is really intense to start off with, instead of bringing it at the fingers, we can start off at the palm, keep our fingers a little bit more flexed here. But over time, we will need to stretch a little bit more, adding those fingers back in. Same thing as a tricep stretch, 30 seconds, three times, once or twice a day there. And I cannot stress out how important mobility is. Mobility is king, whether we're talking about flexibility of tissues or we're talking about joint mobility, that is king. That is the number one thing we need to focus on. A close second is posture. We really need to watch how we're carrying ourselves, especially prolonged positioning, whether we're laying down and sleeping, or we're eating dinner at the table, or we're sitting at work in front of our desk, in front of our computer. We gotta watch that posture. We gotta keep things in nice neutral positions. But again, the number one thing is flexibility and mobility. If you only have time to work on one thing, you gotta try to keep your entire body as flexible as we can. If we're already nice and flexible, we need to maintain it. If something is tight, we need to mobilize it. We need to stretch it. We gotta keep everything working so we can avoid problems like this from happening at the elbow or from happening anywhere else in the body. So by working on our mobility and maintaining good flexibility, we can invest in the future of our health. Again, I'm Dr. Mike Matthews with the Physical Therapy 411. Make sure you follow, like, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I'm gonna be coming out with videos pretty much every week, so make sure you do that so you can be notified when I come out with new content. Thanks for joining me.